In this lecture, we will cover Six Sigma's philosophy in detail. Let us first see what structure does the philosophy hold on which Six Sigma stands? The answer is the Six Sigma stands on these following philosophies data driven approach, process, boundaryless, gate review, CTQ, critical to quality, DPMO, defects per million opportunities, target, and variation. Now I will explain each of these terms in detail. The first philosophy is based on a data-driven approach. Data-driven approach means a fact-based decision-making rather than based on a gut feeling. Let's understand this further. Here, the improvements are based on facts because unless you know where you are standing today and how you could improve, unless you know what is your output for today, how can you improve your output? For example, Six Sigma is based on data and fact, and that's the reason. Once you go higher in this change from white belt to yellow belt, from yellow belt to green belt, and then to black belt, you will see that lots of statistics get involved. You want to make sense out of those numbers. This is a data-driven approach in Six Sigma. In the end, data-driven approach means a fact-based decision-making rather than based on a gut feeling. Let's now see the second philosophy, which is process. Each process has certain inputs and outputs. In Six Sigma, we look at improving output, but changing input. Because if you don't change your input, your output will not change. Let's understand it with the help of this equation. Y equals to F of X. Here, Y is the output and X is the input. This equation means output Y is a function of input X. Here, we can clearly see that the output of the process clearly depends on the input. So, in order to get the improved output, we have to change the input. This is all about process. The next philosophy is boundaryless. It means we shall not restrict ourselves to one particular department. This is because input to our department comes from another department. And that is the reason we need to have integration with other departments, same way your department output will be some other department's input. Therefore, instead of boundaries, we should have interactions between the departments. Let's now see the fourth philosophy, gate review. This is very simple to understand. After each stage, we will have some gates to check the quality of that stage by performing a review. Let's now take an example of the DMAIC approach to understand this. We already know that DMAIC stands for defined, measured, analyzed, improved, and controlled. Here we have five stages, and after each stage, we have a gate review. So once you have defined the project and you go from define phase to the measure phase, there's a gate review. Gate review is to check if quality is met at a defined level or not. If quality is not met, then rework needs to be done in the defined stage. And these checks or gates are very important to detect the problem early. Suppose there are no review gates, then the problem of definition phase will be missed. And once the product reaches a customer, we will come to know about it. With this, the company reputation will go down and we will have to pay a lot to fix the problem. This is the philosophy of a gate review. Let's now move to the fifth point, CTQ, which is critical to quality. Another critical philosophy of Six Sigma is that this is based on customers' needs. Whatever we are doing, whatever improvement we are planning to do, it has to be focused on the customer requirements. And the term for that here is CTQ, which is critical to quality. Critical to quality are all those parameters which are important to customers. You don't want to do any improvement which is not important to your customer 
because that will be a waste of time and a waste of money on something the customer is not concerned about. You have limited resources to do improvements, so do improvement in those areas which are of concern to your customer. This is the philosophy of CTQ. The next point is DPMO, which is defects per million opportunities. This point we already explained in the last lecture. If there is a target of 3.4 defects per million opportunities when you are implementing a Six Sigma, the Six Sigma process would have 3.4 defects in 1 million opportunities. That's also known as DPMO, defects per million opportunities. That's another philosophy of Six Sigma. The seventh philosophy of Six Sigma is target. The target in Six Sigma is around the center which means that this is where you would target your process to be. In a simple example, if I were to say that you were manufacturing a shaft, which is 100 millimeters in length, this can go to 2 millimeter plus or 2 millimeter minus. This shaft can be anything between 98 to 102 millimeters. But in Six Sigma, your target would be to hit 100. That means at the center, by doing this, you will try to minimize variation. The eighth philosophy of Six Sigma is variation. Anything will have variation, but in Six Sigma, your attempt is to have minimum variation. How do you minimize your variation in the process so that you deliver consistent product or consistent services to your customer? With this, all the philosophies are covered. Before we end this lecture, Let's summarize the points. Six Sigma stands on these following philosophies. Data-driven, process, boundaryless, gate review, CTQ, critical to quality, DPMO, defects per million opportunities, target, and variation.